Oh, fuck. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today I have a special treat for you guys. We're actually playing a game on an obscure computer system. Well, obscure to me. It is the Japanese computer system, the NEC PC88. And this is going to be the first time we've played a game on the PC88. And by the way, I say obscure computer system, just obscure to me. Uh, an English speaking Canadian uh, who's lived in uh, Toronto his entire life. Uh, I, you know, this is not an obscure computer system by any stretch, especially in Japan, but uh, I I know very little about this system, so I'm really excited to try a game on this system. And as we see, the first prompt of the game is asking us something in Japanese. I have no idea what it's asking, so we're going to go ahead and say yes. It doesn't like that answer. I will say no. It does not like that answer. How about zero? How about zero? How about... Just escape, or enter, or one. Oh, okay, I like the number one. All right, and here we go into the world of Sokoban. We got that little guy being drawn on the left-hand side there. So a bunch of Japanese uh, instructions, which, again, I cannot read. I don't speak Japanese. Maybe someone can translate this down in the comments. That would be pretty awesome if somebody could. Um, luckily for me, it shows the controls on the screen, which is a step up from uh, some of the old ZX Spectrum games that I play, where I just have to randomly hit keys so I figure out what's what. And also it says F1 key. Hopefully that is the key to start. Or maybe I'll just... Oh, oh, I just pressed spacebar. Okay, that worked too. And this is the world of Sokoban. Sokoban, a.k.a. that box game that you've seen pretty much everywhere in every video game. Um, you you guys know this game. It's it's basically... So here's, here's how it works. You can push boxes forward. And what you're trying to do is push all the boxes into a kind of cargo area hold at the back here. And voila, we have successfully stored a single box. I know, guys, riveting stuff. Riveting stuff here. And basically, this is just a big old puzzle game where you kind of have to just sort of figure out um, how to store boxes. So uh, let me just say, I had no idea that this was a thing. Um, like, okay, I've played many, many, many games like this before. You know, this, this is sort of like a mini game that I've seen in many other games. But I didn't know it was actually... A, a game like I didn't know it was a thing I didn't know there was something called Sokoban and this was it so I just assumed it was some generic kind of like no name nothing of a game that everyone um made clones of and uh oh we uh we we boned ourselves guys <laughs> we we screwed ourselves bad here so there's no way to win the level I have screwed up the, only, the last move I can make is this which helps nothing and we are now officially screwed. We have screwed things up, um, and our guy is has failed at life. He's now forever trapped in the in the crate dungeon. There's no way out. Okay, let's see. Uh, F1 was the key, right? Okay, now I'm being posed a question. I will answer yes. And it resets the level. Oh, my God. All right. So um, somehow, beyond all reasonable doubt... I am able to play an old school Japanese computer game. And all right, so sure. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's the first move you have to make. Um, usually in these Sokoban games, in all the games I've ever played, they kind of use this as a mini game. The first level is usually actually pretty easy. But I'm looking at this, this is actually a pretty complicated opening level here. So now what? Okay, so before we went and we pushed this block to the right. This one here. We can't do that. So the only other way up is to go like this. This feels totally wrong. This feels totally wrong. And it totally is. Because now now I'm trapped again. Now now I gotta do that. Now, now those two are screwed. Okay. So I'm doing something wrong. That moment when you're playing Sokoban and you realize you've just screwed up the entire level. So... What if we do... Let's see, okay, what if we do this, this, this? Oh, I see, oh! And then we prevent that one from ever going up into the tube. Gotcha, gotcha. You gotta think ahead in this ga game, guys. You gotta think ahead. Um, so as I said, Sokoban here is uh, kind of a common uh, mini game, I would say. Like it's, 
Okay, what's happening here? Go down, down. There we go. The controls are actually really sensitive. If I press a key too hard, it presses it twice. And in a game like that, like this, that basically means you're going to lose the game. So I'm trying to be very, like, ginger and gentle on the keys here. Um, but yeah, so this is basically a very common mini game that you see all over the place. And it kind of got me thinking, like, where have you guys seen Sokoban before? And actually, first off, I should ask, did you guys know that Sokoban was a thing? Did you know that there that the word Sokoban meant this game? Again, I thought this was just sort of like the nameless, the box pushing game, you know? Like, I never knew it had a title. So I was like, oh, yeah, it's the box game, you know? Um, but yeah, like, so I've seen this in countless games. The only one that actually comes to mind, I was thinking about this for a little bit before I started recording. The only one I could actually think of of off the top of my head is an old DOS game called Crime Fighter, which is actually an amazing game that uh, I want to play for you guys someday. Um, it's basically like the DOS equivalent of Grand Theft Auto, although the first Grand Theft Auto was on DOS. But you guys know what I mean. It's sort of like a like a, uh, a really sort of like early early DOS game, but it's really it's like Grand Theft Auto. Like you're a criminal and you just do criminal things. And it's almost more extreme than Grand Theft Auto in certain ways, because, like, you can, like, kidnap children and stuff. Like, uh, Grand Theft Auto, you know, for all its, like, violence and sex, it left kids out of it. And, okay, wait, I passed the level. Now what? How, how, do, I, how do I tell it I'm done? Go. Initiate. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Okay, so we know the reset button, which is F1. But what's the, like, now we go to level 2 button? Or is it, was this not what I was supposed to do? Oh, God. Okay, let's try F2, F3, F4. Uh-oh. How about F1? Okay. If I say yes, it'll reset. So I'm going to say no. And then it says okay. Oh, no, wait. It booted me. It booted me to DOS. <laughs> or Microsoft Basic or whatever the equivalent of. Wait. Exit. Syntax error. Quit. Okay. How about this? 10 print... Yeah, we're going to make a little basic program. Uh, we're going to say gaming J rules. And then we're going to put 20, go to 10, and we're going to run. Boom! Look at that. Oh, and look, the game's graphics are, like, uh, stuck in the background there. Um, all right, we'll, we'll reset this in a minute, but just while uh, while we, we bask in the glory, like, th this is this is the screenshot, guys. We have slammed our way through level one, and now we're just, like, we're, like, rubbing the game's face into it. We're like, yeah, look at it. I rule. Um, before we reset, okay, so games that are like Sokoban, um, like, I'm trying to remember. I don't, You know what? Oddly enough, Chip's Challenge is a game everyone loves that I, like, I don't think I've ever played, but is Chip's Challenge kind of like this? You know, I think there's, like, mobile games that are like this. Like, it's a basic puzzle game, um, but apparently it has a name. I, I'm, I'm so caught up on the fact that Sokoban is a thing, I, I, just, I just can't get over it. So, okay, here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, reset, and we'll go ahead and let, let our NEC PC88 boot back up. The PC-88, of course, was a Japanese computer, and as I say, I know very little about it, to be honest, um, but it did have companies like, um, oh wait, maybe this is like, what level do you want to play? Let's try that. It did have companies like Enix and Square, back when they were separate companies, Sega, Bandai, HAL Laboratories, Hudson Soft, they all made games for, oh, that's asking me what level you want to play, boom, all right, hey, we're figuring out Sokoban, guys one level at a time apparently this game has 10 levels if i could pass three i think that would be a wild success so okay we got to think about this which way do we how do we want to start this off i don't even know so i'm guessing okay it looks like the only way to really start is over here this has to be the first move and if that's the first move then maybe Let's see. Um, oh, God. What's the second move now? <laughs> um, um, maybe. Oh, my God. It's so hard. Why is this game so hard? Okay, hold on. I got to think about this. Okay, I've been staring at the screen for like five minutes. And I have thought about it. And my conclusion is I still don't know what to do. So we're just... You know what? We're just going to do some things... We're going to see see how they go, see how those things work. They they may or may not work well for us. We will see. Actually, this is 
I, I didn't see this move when I was sort of thinking about it, and I think I might have screwed myself. I was originally thinking maybe I'll just jam uh, this one here into this too, but that doesn't work because now you're stuck. Okay, so we clearly have to go around to the top. Let's go ahead and reset the level here. I'm a Sokoban, uh, Sokoban regular here because I know like all the buttons. So we're going to like this. Then we can, we, we can do this, and we can do this. And we can do this. Oh, and we screwed ourselves there, but that's okay. Okay, so I guess this is like the first move. Okay, so we can do this. Anyway, PC88, yeah, it was, you know, like many legitimate companies produced games for it. It was like the Japanese, one of the Japanese PCs, along with the MSX. Um, like, I know the names of things, but I just don't know a lot about these computers. So um, I know that Hudson Soft, by the way, actually, in an interesting sort of twist of fate, there are some Nintendo games on the NEC PC-88, but they were all produced by Hudson Soft, which is kind of interesting. I, I mean, like, real games, like uh, games like Excite Bike, um, Ice Climbers. What else was there? Like, Balloon Fight. There's even some, like, Mario games, like the old Mario Brothers arcade games where, like, Mario and Luigi had to, like, kill turtles and crabs and flies that were coming out of pipes. I'm pretty sure that game is on the NEC, or some derivative of it. I think it was, like, Mario Punch Ball or something uh, was one of the games. So, yeah, the NEC was a thing. It has Microsoft Basic on it, as we just saw there, where I wrote my awesome little program, Gaming J Rules. <laughs> Go to 10. Uh, that, that was, like, the most basic program that everybody wrote. Some, like, stupid little program that's, like, you know, like, like Jordan's the king. And then you'd hit, you know, go to 10 and run. And you'd be like, yeah. Or, like, Chad rules. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess I could have wrote something slightly more impressive. But you guys came here to watch some Sokoban, not see me uh, write basic programs. Okay, now we can do this. Okay, here's some progress being made. Um... By the way, so what is the backstory here for Circle for Sokoban? Like, okay, so Sokoban is is a thing; it's its own game. We've accepted that much, but like, what the heck is the backstory here for this dude? Like, like who is he? Why is he working in some like random like like? Okay, is he? First of all, I guess he's a warehouse worker. Like, I guess that's the thing. I mean, it kind of looks like he's in this, like, random, like, brick dungeon. It's almost, it, it feels more like he's, like, a victim of, like, the Saw Killer, you know? And, like, he's, like, here is some, like, sadistic, sadomasochistic game to, like, prove that he's alive or something like that. And it's all about, like, uh, you know, it, it's the Saw Killer, basically. Uh, but I guess, I guess he's actually supposed to be, like, some kind of, like, warehouse worker. Uh, which actually is a little more messed up because like look at this warehouse. It's like a random like maze of like hallways And also like what kind of warehouse makes an employee like manually shove crates with like their their own physical force You know <laughs> like he doesn't get a forklift. It's like use your hands Tony be a man clear the goddamn warehouse man style So uh, man, we, we rock this level. We totally figured it out um, we just have to keep doing this and this, and then we go like this. Oh yeah, we got this. So, and, and also, if this is a warehouse, why are the, the crates scattered all over the place in, like, random rooms? See, it makes me think it's not a warehouse and it is actually, like, a riff on saw. Because it's not like he's moving them to a loading dock, he's just moving them to, like, another brick room. Which makes me feel like this, like, random faceless dude here, he's trapped in some kind of, like, nightmarish game to, like, uh, prove something. Oops. Boom! We did it! We did it! And then he freaks out. He's like, yeah! 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 And now if there was a button that could go to level two. Maybe I just press the numbers. Three, no. Escape, no. Uh, I, like, I, I honestly don't know. What were buttons on the NEC? Uh, let's just try F1 again. Let's say yes. And, oh, and we move on to the next level. Okay. So there we go. So F1 is like... So F1 is sort of like the reset slash I think I'm done. It's interesting how the game doesn't like automatically finish the level off for you uh, when you, you know, when you kind of reach the end. It sort of like waits for you to like press the done button. It's sort of like it doesn't want to end the level too fast. It's like if you want to take some time and just walk around the halls without having to push a box, we understand. We want to give you that choice so you can just sort of go ahead and uh, push a box. But, uh, you know, as a minigame, though, like, this, the Sokoban, the idea of the Sokoban game is actually, like, uh, pretty reasonable, I'd say. Um, I wouldn't say it's, like, mind-blowing or my favorite puzzle game of all time, but, like, 
it's like it's playable. It's solidly playable, and I feel like that's 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 good. <laughs> I mean, of, of course it's good, but I also feel like it's good. And I think we got this level down pat too. You know what? I, it's like that first level was like actually a little tricky. But now that I got I, I got that out of my system, I feel like these follow-up levels are actually not that hard. Although, now that I've said that, the next level we play, I'm sure, is going to be some, like, you know, di you know like, soul-crushingly difficult puzzle, you know, created by the Jigsaw Killer in order to, like, you know, torture my man Chad here and, like, uh, you know, bring him to his knees... But we got this. We got this. Now, this first game here, by the way, I think only has 10 levels. But this game was like a sequel magnet. Like, I'm pretty sure that there's like, uh, on the NEC alone, there's something like four or five sequels to this game. There's like Sokoban 2, Sokoban's Revenge, Sokoban Extended Edition, blah, blah, blah. There's just like a bunch. It's like every variation of Sokoban you could want. Like Sokoban's, you know, like uh, Hanukkah Madness Blitz is on here, I'm sure. Like, just like all these, all these Sokoban variants. Um, then we want to go like this. Once once you kind of, like, clear out the bulk of the crates, this level kind of completes itself. Um, another interesting bit of trivia about Sokoban, by the way, is that apparently it's of a lot of interest to, like, AI researchers. So, like, uh, this, I mean, you can see why. I mean, you have to plan, like, a very meticulous path through these levels and stuff. And apparently Sokoban's, like, a pretty complex game, like, uh, up there with chess. So it's, like, AI researchers are interested in sort of, uh, you know... Uh, figuring out how to develop AI algorithms to beat Sokoban. But there we go. We, we've completed yet another task. Are you happy yet, Jigsaw? Does this not entertain you? On to the next level. Jigsaw's masterpiece. This one is called Death of a Thousand Sloths. And uh, off we go. And we'll do this, maybe? Don't even know. Probably screwing myself. And we want to go like this. Then we want to go like this. All right. So uh, that feels okay. I'm always so hesitant to push two boxes together. Look at these. Like right below me, there's like three in a row. And so like you can't push them because there's two in a row. He's not strong enough. Again, if they just gave him a forklift. But I guess that's not what Jigsaw's end game is. They want to see like Chad here like suffer. They want to see him suffer badly. We'll do this. So we'll be able to clear out a couple of these rooms. Um, yeah, I think officially there's something like 300 levels of Sokoban, but it's spread across like several games or something like that. Um, but uh, Oh, I was talking about AI. Oh, okay. You know, before I get off too off topic of AI, this game is of interest to AI researchers. But have you guys seen the Netflix documentary AlphaGo, which is about the Google team that developed an AI that was able to beat the world championship or not even beat, but like compete, I should say, uh, compete with the world champion in uh, Go, which is uh, one, considered one of the most complicated games uh, that humans play. Like, it's way more complicated than chess, apparently. Apparently, I, I, I had no idea. Um, that is an awesome doc. If you have not seen it, I totally recommend going and checking it out. It's called uh, Alpha, Alpha Go. And, uh, and I think one of the guys who's on the, the team who developed the AI, he was also one of the programmers for the AI of Black and White, that, uh, that video game about uh, being a god um, that we played on the channel way back when. So, you know, there's, there's like a little bit of, there's a little bit of Gaming J in uh, that uh, Netflix documentary AlphaGo, some like weird convoluted, uh, you know, six degrees of separation. So, uh, but it's, it's a great doc. If you guys like documentaries at all, I find it to be like super fascinating. Like just not only the mechanics of how they designed this AI, but also just um, like the, the the whole politics of the game. It takes place in South Korea where like Go, which is just like an ancient sort of Chinese uh, board game essentially. But you know, like Koreans are really into gaming, you know, like in the way that like they show like uh, League of Legends matches and stuff on ES or their equivalent of ESPN over there, like on TV. Whereas over here, it's like, you know, there's always this debate about, are esports really sports, you know? And, like, a bunch of people be like, no, never. Uh, but in, in Korea, they're, like, airing esports on TV. And, like, the Go champion is considered, like, a national hero and stuff like that. So uh, it's very interesting, very different culture. I love seeing stuff like that. Uh, and so it's about gaming, the gaming culture, sort of, even though it's not technically about video games. But it's about, uh, it's about a computerized version of Go. I mean... The human plays a computerized version of Go against uh, the Google AI, so there you go. Um, 
we're doing pretty well in this level, actually. I thought that this level would be kind of the end of us, but I feel like we got this one figured out. So I'm just I'm just very casually going through the motions here. Now the one the one downside about Sokoban is it doesn't really have a lot of replay value. Like once you kind of figure out the puzzles, they're kind of figured out. So um, I now and there are a lot of ports and remakes of this game, but I bet you out there is some procedurally generated version of Sokoban where like every time you play it, uh, the computer will like generate new levels for you. And so that version of Sokoban probably has a lot of replay value for people who like Sokoban. But, uh, well, and then I guess also, like, you know, this game is so old now, and there's probably hundreds of thousands of different puzzles. So if you really like Sokoban, you could probably find a version of it that has, like, 10,000 puzzles. And then, like, it technically doesn't have replay value because once you do all the puzzles once, you've pretty much done them. But there's kind of two big asterisks to that whole concept. The first is that... Uh, you know, who's going to remember all 10,000 puzzles? So you probably could do each puzzle more than once. But second of all, who's going to get through all 10,000 puzzles? So probably, yeah, you can't replay the game, but I don't think you'd want to. I think after 10,000 puzzles, you'd have your, your lifetime fill of Sokoban. And we're just slamming our way through this level. I kind of want to fail so I can write another uh, basic program. What should our program say next time, guys? I, I don't remember enough basic commands to do anything more than just like an infinite loop of like saying something. How about we'll say, um, I don't know, J rules. <laughs> so creative, right? I'm so creative. I can't think anything. I don't know. There you go, Jigsaw. Will you release me? Will you release me? And then we say yes. And then Jigsaw says, not so fast. First, you have to learn the meaning of life. Sometimes... Death is that meaning. And he's like, oh man, he's going to ice my whole family. If I don't push these boxes in a specific, very specific sequence that he wants, he's going to ice everyone I've ever loved. And that is the truth. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm just thinking here. Like how I want to do this. There is a trap here. If I go up, I think I've screwed myself. So I have to instead do this and then, oh, and get this out of the way. There we go. Okay, now that I've done that, now I think I've screwed myself. I think, I, I think I've screwed myself because there's no way to get to this one to my left because uh, I, I can't move these. Yeah, I screwed myself. Okay, so let's go ahead and retry this level. All right, the gaming J AI has broken down and not been able to solve this particular problem. Um, let's see. Uh, I think I screwed myself again. Yep, I did. God. <laughs> okay, so we can't push that one block. This will be our last level, by the way, because I feel like all these levels, they, you know, they, they become very similar very quickly. But... Um, how can we do this? You know, let's just try... Try this. I'm pretty sure this this is a failing strategy. Because I'm pretty sure I've kind of screwed myself on the upper boxes now. Because, um, yeah, like if I want, I can clear away a lot of these these ones in here now. Whoops, did not mean to do that. Oh, and I screwed myself. <laughs> I was going to push this one over and then get around it by going down and around. But, yeah, okay, so see if I want to go up to the top. I'm kind of screwed. I can do that. But... Uh, like, if I go up like this, I block that box off. So I have to go this way. But then I've locked myself in. So, yeah, I can't go up there. Um, okay. But no, I don't want to don't want 100% give up. But I'm just kind of curious here. How could I actually do this? So what if I do like this? Oh, what about this and this? Is this how it's done? And then we'll try and push this one away. Um, all right. All right, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start wrapping my thoughts up on this game because, like, all these levels are pretty similar. And, you know, the, the next level is just going to be in it, another big set of me pushing boxes and stuff. And, like, honestly, like, I, I don't have too much to say about Sokoban. Um, so, as I said at the beginning of this video, though, I was super excited to try out a new console. Uh, the NEC uh, PC-88. So, you know, like, for people who follow my channel, I'm on this quest to play through the book A Thousand Games to Play Before You Die. 
So I'm playing through like a lot of like old games. Um, and one thing that I've really discovered I enjoy doing on this quest is trying out new consoles. Like I always prided myself on someone who like had a pretty wide gaming repertoire before I even started this series. But the more, the longer the series goes on, the more I realize that like it was actually a bit of an illusion. Like I thought my gaming experiences were more diverse than they really were, you know, like, like I, I scratched the surface. It's like I play DOS and NES and Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, like all the big ones. But then like there's tons of these like other things that you know i didn't really play much commodore 64 or very much zx spectrum at all um oh damn it <laughs> i just screwed myself okay whatever um you know and the the nec the pc the nec pc 88 is a series of home computers that i've heard of for a long time and just like never never been able to check out because i you know i'm not from japan so just the idea of being able to go and check out an, an nec pc 88 game was actually pretty exciting and I don't know, like, maybe it's, you know, not that different from, like, uh, you know, one of the old DOS computers that I played with. But I, I just like the fact that we've now tried a, an NEC computer. As far as Sokoban goes here, um, Sokoban is one of the games in the book A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. It's a bizarre example of something I assumed was just some nameless minigame, but it is actually a real game. And so kind of thinking of it like that... Like, I don't think you necessarily need to go out of your way to play this version of Sogoban. You know, like, I, I wouldn't say this is a must-play. Like, oh, you haven't lived until you've booted up a PC-88 and played the original Japanese Sogoban. I don't think that's the case at all. At the same time, I don't think this is a bad game. I think nowadays this is more like sort of a fun little, like, casual mobile game or like a little mini game. And, oh, man, guys, help me. What other games does this... Does a version of Sokoban appear in, like, a clone of Sokoban? I know of Crime Fighter, but it appears in so many other games. I know it. I can. It's, like, on the tip of my tongue. It's bugging me so much. What other games does this sort of box-pushing mechanic appear in? Because this has basically become, like, a generic minigame because it's been used so much. Um, and from that perspective, I would say this is, like, a very, like, solid kind of puzzle game very interesting very fun it's you know methodical you have to sort of plan and figure out what you're going to do let's go ahead and just start a new level here uh we're going to go ahead to no uh we'll run oh run just takes us back in perfect let's go to level 10 and see see what it is let's see what the final stage looks like let's uh let's fight jigsaw in his final form uh but yeah so it's i, I don't think you necessarily have to play the real sokoban um and i don't I wouldn't necessarily even ne go out of my way to play Sokoban if I never played it, but I will say that it's like it's a very sort of solid entry in like the history of like puzzle games. And if you haven't played it, but you find you you do enjoy puzzle games, there's there's a solid game here. I think you know you could go in, you could play around with it, have a bit of fun with Sokoban. It's a very interesting game. Um, got very very basic mechanics, but I think that's what makes it so timeless and why it's been cloned and reused so much is that it, it is such a simple game uh, But there's something there's something a little sort of fun and satisfying and addicting about uh, the basicness that is Sokoban So those are my thoughts. What do you guys think of Sokoban? Have you played the original here? Do you have uh, do you have you know memories of playing it? Do you have you played an NEC PC-88 before? Uh, on that note, um, have you played some clone or some version of this? Again, you know, where where has the mechanic, where has Sokoban been cloned? What are games that have used Sokoban as a clone? I, I would love to hear some examples because, again, I feel like it's on the tip of my tongue. I just can't come up with any on the spot, which uh, sucks. Oh, I just screwed myself. Oh, well. I was never going to pass this level anyway. Let's just mess this warehouse up so that nobody can solve this puzzle. That's our only strategy now. Like, if we can't win, nobody can. Every every box is going to touch a wall. That's how I'm going to end the level. Um, but, yeah. Um, and so, yeah. So, what do you guys think of Sokoban? What are some clones you can think of? Blah, blah, blah. And also, whatever you happen to think of Sokoban, whether you think it is a must-play or whether you agree with me that, like, it's kind of interesting, but, like, I wouldn't go out of my way to play it if I've never played it. But that said, like, it is sort of iconic. You know, if, if do you agree with that assessment? Do you disagree? And uh, whatever whatever you think of my assessment, um, hopefully I have made today entertaining for you. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, listening to me talk. You've learned a little something. Um, and if that's the case, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And uh, we will be back soon with yet another game in the ongoing quest to play through the book. A thousand games you must play before you die. So until then, my friends, don't find yourself employed by a warehouse that will not give you a forklift. 
um, slash do not find yourself accidentally trapped in a dungeon of puzzles because in both scenarios you're not going to have a good time and uh, in both scenarios oh we got to write one more DOS program what am I doing um, okay 10 we're going to print uh, you guys have been awesome and then we're going to let's see this time on line 20 we're going to print peace Trace, peace. Learn to type, Jay. And then on 30, we're going to go to 10. And then we're going to run. All right. You guys have been awesome. You all take care of yourselves. And peace.